Hello and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm Rebecca Felgate and I'm bringing you a part two to the craziest deaths at the Olympics. Obviously, part one was very sad indeed, but hopefully by discussing some of these deaths, we can remember the victims, most of which died doing what they love. Coming in at number 10, we have the seven teenagers killed in a bus crash. Devastatingly, a bus carrying a group of Greek teenagers from a school in Fracadona to the Athens Paralympic Games crashed with a lorry en route to the event. This killed seven and injured over 25 youngsters. Following their deaths, all remaining games held a minute's silence and the Paralympic closing ceremony cancelled its entertainment section. This included the firework display as a mark of respect. Coming in at number 9, we have Hygienus Anugo. In 2000, a promising 22 year old Nigerian runner was killed after training at the Sydney Olympics. He was struck by a car really sadly as he crossed the street. Following his death, the Nigerian flag flew at half mast in the Olympic Village. Coming in at number 8, we have Ignaz Stifson. Australian Olympic glider Ignaz died at the 1936 Berlin Olympics the day before a gliding demonstration was due to take place. In practice, one of the wings of his glider broke, sending the athlete tumbling to his death. In the number 7 and number 6 spots, we have two Winter Olympians who both died at the 1964 Innsbruck Games in Austria. Coming in at number 7, we have Polish born British loser Kazimierz Kai Skierpecki. Kazimierz was 55 when he died following a luge crash in practice. This was just six days before the opening ceremony. This Olympics was the first event to ever include luges competitively. Sadly, at number 6, this young Austrian died just three days after him. Ross Milner was just 19. 19 years old when he died after losing control during practice and hitting a tree. Now this was days after the British Luges accident. The two deaths of the 1964 Winter Olympics really marred proceedings and some even called them cursed after a plane crashed into the mountains a month after the opening ceremony. This killed 83 people. More alpine disasters next, at number 5 we have Nicholas Bocciate. The 27 year old Swiss skier sadly collided with a snow grooming machine at the 1992 Albertville Winter Olympics in France. He was warming up with a teammate ahead of the finals of the speed skiing competition when he swerved off course and crashed head on into the vehicle. The accident happened just one day before the closing ceremony. At number 4 we have the sad tale of Jörg Olberhammer at the Calgary Winter Olympics in 1988. Jörg was the Austrian team doctor who met his demise in Canada as he crashed into a CTV technician on a recreational slope. This was all just before the men's giant slalom race. Unfortunately, the impact of the crash meant that Jörg sped into the path of a snow grooming machine and was killed instantly. Of course, it's not all humans that have suffered as a result of the often brutal Olympic Games, as we know from the dove incident from our part one. That's right, animals can suffer too. At number three, we have a death that caused public outrage. We have the 2016 Brazilian Jaguar. A Jaguar was the mascot of the 2016 Rio Games, and a real life Jaguar was featured in the Olympic torch relay. However, shortly after the cat captured wild animals moment in the spotlight, it was shot as it broke free of its restraints. The local Olympic organizing committee said, we made a mistake in permitting the Olympic torch, a symbol of peace and unity, to be exhibited alongside a chained wild animal. The Jaguar's death wasn't the only one at Rio 2016. At number 2, we have Paralympian barman Goldburn Izad. Barman was an Iranian cyclist on the Paralympic team and he had previously competed at the London 2012 Games. Unfortunately, he died died following a collision with a rock at the men's C45 road cycling event. This was the first time in decades that an Olympian had actually died during an event. A minute's silence was held for him at the closing ceremony. Finally, at number one, it is a government's responsibility to make sure that construction of the games is safe and it seems like by the number of deaths surrounding the Sochi Winter Olympics, the Russian government totally failed their people. That's right, finally at number one, we have the 60 plus people who were killed building Sochi 2014. Official figures are pretty sketchy, with some reporting 60 workers deaths and others reporting over 100. Russia employed cheap Moldovan and Asian labourers were forced to work in unsafe conditions. Now This led to frequent deaths that were reportedly covered up by the Russian Olympic Committee. Reports of bribes to the families of the victims were also rife. While this is unacceptable and a huge 
huge loss of life in relation to the Olympics, this is nothing compared to the number of worker deaths reported in Qatar ahead of the 2022 World Cup. Now, you would hope that history would be able to teach those in charge an important lesson. However, when money and corruption are frequently placed over human well being, something really needs to be done. So, guys, thanks so much for watching this episode of Most Amazing Top 10. I really hope to be able to bring you something happier next time, but it is important to remember these victims. For now, I'm Rebecca Felgate. Make sure you give this video a good thumbs up if you found it interesting, share it with a friend, and stay subscribed for more engaging videos. I'll see you next time.